Never before in recorded history has debt been so high. Unfortunately, the United States is the largest debtor nation in world history. I don't like saying any of this. I'm an American citizen, voter, taxpayer like you, but it's the highest debt that any nation in the history of the world has ever had. I knew for many years that America was building up its debt. I knew that our politicians were incompetent and out of control. But no, I never expected it to go this high before a collapse. We will have a collapse someday because history shows it always happens. But I never expected to get this high. Theory going around now called MMT, more money today. They say, don't worry, we'll just print it. We'll just print it. There's not a problem at all. So if you listen to them, you should not worry, not worry at all. However, I have read a little history and I've been around a while. And I know that throughout history, when you build up gigantic debts, eventually it leads to a crisis or a semi-crisis. We had a problem in 2008, as you remember. Well, since then, the debt has skyrocketed all over the, even China now has a lot of debt. China helped bail out the world in 2008, but even China now has a lot of debt. So it's going to be a big mess. Okay, so let's say we have a new Bretton Woods. What are they going to do? <laughs> wipe out the debt? Well, there are a lot of creditors who are not going to be particularly happy if they wipe out the debt. Endowments, insurance companies, pension plans, they're not going to be very happy if all of a sudden they found out the debt is wiped out. So, sure, we can have a new Bretton Woods. We can all drink good wine and lots of tea and coffee, but what's the answer? Uh, and that's the problem right now because the debt is the highest level ever in recorded history and to repeat america is the single largest debtor nation in world history it's never happened like this before so when will this end i don't know i'm not very good at market timing but that always comes to an end eventually i'm not shorting anything right now but i can see i can see bubbles starting to form in some assets i've been to this movie i've seen this movie before i know how it ends i don't know when it's going to end but i know in the next couple of years it's going to end and it's not going to be fun. But well, it is certainly happening all over the world. America's not the only, I mean, we apparently, according to the numbers, have been hit worse by the virus than any other nation. And who knows if the numbers are valid or not. But it's certainly gotten worse and has not helped anybody. There are many companies, families, countries that are suffering. And it's not, unfortunately, it's not over yet. At least in most places, it's not over yet. You can come up with a universal basic income. It sounds wonderful. Who's going to pay for it? Where's the money going to come from? That's my question again. Sure, MMT, more money today, says just print it. But <laughs> I've seen this rodeo. Huh? It's not my first rodeo. I know that you can print it all day long, and it's fantastic. But eventually, that falls apart. It always has anyway, and I don't see why it would be different this time. Throughout history, when you have people lose confidence in money, our governments, all of us peasants have some gold and silver in the closet. We have some silver under the bed over there. You know, we forget what the politicians say, forget the academics. You know, we're gonna have some gold and silver hidden away, and I will too, and I will have more. I just don't know when I'm going to buy more. Well, the most important things are to be prepared uh, because it's not going to be fun when we have problems next time. It never is fun, but next time it's going to be worse because the debt is so, so high. So what I am trying to do with my daughters and everybody is to make sure that they develop their own personal skills. They both speak perfect Chinese, for instance. So I'm trying to prepare them for what perhaps will be the 21st century. If I'm right, Chinese is going to be an extremely important language in their lifetime. And so I'm, that's one of the things I'm trying to prepare them for. Uh, it's no good though to say to somebody, look, you got to learn to play basketball if they don't like basketball. Well, my girls don't particularly like basketball. So I'm trying to, to learn as a parent to help them emphasize the things they like. I have been teaching them since they were born that they must save their money. One of the first things I did was to give them piggy banks, uh, six piggy banks to be exact, so that they would learn that when you get money, you save it. Money is not to be spent, it's to be saved uh, and uh, ultimately invested. And so since they were little babies, whenever they got money, they learned to go over and put it in the piggy bank. As you know, many people's lives have been destroyed because they didn't understand money. They ran up debts, they didn't have savings, they didn't invest. So the most important thing that I wanted them to learn was money is to be saved and invested, not spent. And 
I think that is sinking into them. Uh, so far, so good. I have learned that you cannot do enough homework, research, preparation. There's always more you can do, and you better do it because something will hit you out of left field otherwise. Belief is not enough.、Uh, you have to really know what's going on. Don't believe in belief. Believe in facts. Believe in reality. Make sure you know that you are right. Because if you just get passionate or hope or believe something, you're probably going to suffer a lot. So my main advice to everybody is just stay with what you know, and then there won't be too much belief. It'll be based on. On reality, and when things go wrong, you will know better than most what to do and how to react.、Uh, if you just believe something, you're probably not going to know what to do. You're probably not going to know how to react when it goes against you. So just it, it, nobody likes to hear this advice, but the answer is just stay with what you know. If I told you you could only have 20 investments in your life, you wouldn't jump in and out of things. You wouldn't jump into things that you heard on the TV or something, and you would be better. Prepared, because then when something goes wrong, you will know what to do. Simple guy like me, who's just researching it, etc., etc., will not know nearly as much as you do, because you know. I hope you know a lot more about it, and that's how you become successful. Nobody wants to hear that; it gets too boring. But if you want to be successful, be boring. Whenever there are hard times, people look for easy answers.、Uh, I mean, socialism and communism—great story. <laughs> I mean, it sounds wonderful. We have tried. You know, Mr. Marx was around over 100, 150 years ago. It's a good story, very good story. A lot of people liked it, and a lot of people tried it. But in the last 150 years, we have found out it doesn't work, nor does socialism work. So, sure, but people who, first of all, don't have the experience or don't read history or don't see what's really happened. Love the story, but I can tell you, given human nature, since it's a good story and it's an easy story, more people will try it when things get really bad, or try MMT. You know, more money today. Any good story, easy story, people will try because they think, oh, that'll save us. Unfortunately, there's no free lunch. This is just human nature I'm talking about. You don't have to go around the world to know about human nature. You read some history, if nothing else, and people will look for the easy answer. And no, I know it's not going to work, and I know it'll make it worse in the end. If you look at America in the past 15 years, people just printed and spent and borrowed huge amounts of money. After 2008, everybody said, "Okay, this is the only thing we can do. We have to borrow a lot of money and spend a lot of money and print a lot of money. It's the only way to save us." Fools like me said, "Wait a minute, guys! It's going to make it worse in the end. It's going to make it much worse in the end. It's good to be old. I don't have to worry about how this is going to wind up. It's not a good time to be young because all the young people are going to be facing huge. I mean, gigantic." Debts and problems over your lifetime, and it's not going to be an easy. An you may try easy answers like 2008, but in the end, somebody has to pay the price. Do I like it? No, I want an easy free lunch too. Oh my gosh, I want things to fall out of the sky. But I've read enough and been around long enough to know it doesn't work that way. Commodity is the only asset class, as a class, that I see that's still cheap, and I know the fundamentals are changing. More people in America study public relations and study agriculture now. Obviously, if the world changes, you have to change with the world. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Energy is still the most important commodity, at least if you ask me. As I go, I live in Singapore, and everybody here is still driving and taking the bus to work, etc. Still has electricity, and nearly all energy comes from oil and natural gas. That may be changing. It seems to be changing, but you know, Jeff. Even if you look at things like electric cars, which seem to be coming, first of all, you got to produce the electricity, which got to be made from something. Maybe it's sun power, maybe it's solar power or wind power. But electric cars, for instance, use five times as much copper as regular cars. So, yeah, the demand for oil may go down, but the demand for copper is going to go up, and lead, and lithium, and other things.